is Carl from National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through your Kodiak Cub, model 176D. All right, I'm on the door side of the trailer, walking back towards the back. You see you've got a power awning with an LED awning strip. You've got crank down stabilizer jacks. They take a, a crank or a, a, you can run them up and down using your drill with a three quarter inch socket, which is what most people do these days. You got outside speakers. This vent here is for the range hood uh, fan. So if you're running your fan for your range hood, uh, it will vent right there. Okay. You can open this baffle so it baffles or flaps freely uh, when you're venting. So otherwise, you'll just keep it shut. You got a TV mount, power, and antenna out for uh, outside TV. All right. You have a center line weight distribution switch or hitch with built in sway control. Um, we'll show you how that operates. And you can also, uh, if you need to refresh yourself when you're first using it, you can always go to their website and they have hookup videos on there too. That's Husky Center Line. Okay, this is just a, a port to hook up a, a solar panel to charge the battery. If you ever buy one, you can hook it up right there. Uh, you have two LP tanks, 20 pound tanks. Uh, that's your LP regulator there. You got a deep cycle marine battery. This is your water heater. Okay. The switches to operate it are inside. Uh, this is where it drains from right here, just so you know. All right, I'll show you the switches when we get inside. Now these are your dump valves. You get a hose with the trailer that hook the, the hose hooks right on here and here. Um, so you have a gray tank here. You'll dump that. Then you'll or first you'll do the the black tank because it's uh, uh, it's toilet water and waste. Then you'll do the gray because it's sink and shower water, which is cleaner water than the than the uh, black water. So uh, it's just a, the best way to do it. This is a black tank flush. So before you remove your hose from the black tank uh, dump valve, you'll keep the valve open and then you'll turn on the water at the dump station. This will, will flush your black tank out even better. It, it's got a jet in, sprinkler jet inside and it sprays the inside of the tank and keep, gets it nice and clean, all right? This is your panel service panel for your refrigerator. You don't really have to go in there, it's just for service. This hose should always be hanging out. Let me get the shipping tape off of it here. There we go. There we go. So it should always be hanging out like that. That just drains condensation for the refrigerator. That's your furnace vent. This is just uh, a coax through to the inside of the trailer if you've got campground cable or whatever. This is a quick connect for a sprayer that's in the front compartment, just a blue coiled hose with a sprayer. This is your city water connection. So this is what you're normally gonna to use to get water for your, to your trailer. You're just gonna hook up the city water. You're going to uh, turn it on and your trailer's ready to go. Now if you go to an older state park, for example, that doesn't have plumbing on the campsite but has a fill station, um, you have an onboard water tank and you can fill it right here. And uh, then you can use the onboard water pump to, to pressurize the water system and it works just like you have city water. So if nine times out of ten you're going to be using the regular city water hookup, but for the times you don't have plumbing on the campsite, you'll use this. All right, you've got a 35-inch cord, 25 feet long. That's a, your power cord. That housing up there is for a backup camera. This is pre-wired for a Furion backup camera. You have to get that camera that fits into that housing if you're going to use it. We do sell them here, you can talk to our parts people, but either way, if you, wherever you buy it from, you have to have the right one to fit in there, okay? Also, while I'm looking up at the roof, you have to inspect your roof three times a year. That's every trailer ever made you have to do this to. So, you'll go up there in the spring and in the fall and once in the summer, and you look around at all the sealant down the roof and make sure it's nice and tight, no cracks, no separation. If you see it starting, then you're gonna wanna get it taken care of. All right, so let's go over to the door and go inside. 
Okay. So, first thing we see is your control panel. Okay. Um, I told you you can you can operate your water heater from here. So to operate it on electric, you're just going to throw this switch. To operate it on gas, you throw this switch. Normally you're going to just be using electricity because you're paying for it. You're not going to be guzzling up your gas. Always make sure there's water in the water heater tank before you turn it on. Uh, you do that by turning on your hot water. And if it's spitting the air out, uh, you know it's not full yet and just let it go and it'll, it'll get more solid water coming out and pretty soon totally solid water you then you know your tanks full all right um, to operate your power awning it's right here I'll just show you from here you're just gonna push it and out it goes you can see it going out right there so you just crank it out until you see the metal awning tube when you see the tube you know that it's all, all the way unrolled and uh, um, fully deployed. Just remember never leave it out when you're not at the campsite. You only put it out when you're there because uh, the wind can whip up underneath it really quick and cause you all kinds of problems. Alright so now this shows several two black tanks and two gray tanks. You just have one of each. Um, so this panel fits different models. So you, your freshwater tank still is two-thirds full because we're water testing it but it'll be empty. The black tank or the battery excuse me is totally charged you always want to check it when you're not plugged in. Your black tank is empty. You can see as it fills, it'll graduate up in one-third increments. Um, the gray tank is empty also. These are just for your lights. The porch light is your, your awning uh, LED light. You can see it there, I hope, with the sun glaring. Okay. All right, so as we move into the trailer, you just light, turn this on and light it with a match. That's all you do. It's that simple. Uh, this is your range hood that I told you about. You got a fan and a light. Um, make sure you open the baffle on the outside of the trailer if you're going to use the fan. Uh, the microwave works like any other microwave. Your TV can hang here from a TV. The backer is here, right here, so you can screw a back bracket into there. And this is the power um, signal booster for your digital antenna to hook your TV up to. Your radio. Uh, there's AM FM radio. It plays DVDs and CDs. Um, it'll, you can stream off this USB stick and it has Bluetooth so you can hook up wirelessly with your uh, phone or tablet. And there's two speaker zones. One is inside, two is outside. Alright, down here this is your power converter. This converts 110 AC to 12 volt DC. Everything that can run on 12 volt DC in a trailer does. Some things have to be AC power like you can see uh, you got household circuit breakers here and you got the the AC and the microwave, things like that have to be AC power. Um, the rest of it's converted down to 12 volt DC. You have automotive style fuses there. If those ever blow, they'll actually light up and you can see them through this perforation here. It's also a battery tender, so it'll sense how much energy your battery needs and it'll keep it totally charged as long as you're plugged in. Okay? Good. Let's see what else we got here. Let me look around. Your table obviously folds down and sits on these cleats here, and you can use the back cushions to fill in space to turn it into another bed. All right. Let me get up here. Your air conditioner, you have knobs just like a window air conditioner. This one is for temperature, and this one is, uh, uh, you can use this side, which is just the fan running without the compressor, and then the actual air conditioner on this side, two speeds on each. Your refrigerator is a gas absorption refrigerator made by Dometic. There's just two switches to operate it on and off, so that's on. Notice it went to auto. I can turn it to auto to gas. So auto means electric. That's where you're going to set it most of the time. Uh, it always seeks out electricity. If you're at a campground and you have a power failure, you're running on air conditioning, it'll automatically switch over to gas, for example. Um, if you want to run it dedicated to gas and pull it down the road, you can always go like that. Um, if this check light comes on, it means it did the light, so you just turn it off and turn it back on again. I'm sorry, you couldn't see that. Turn it off and turn it back on again to get the air out of the line. But nine times out of ten, you're just going to run it on auto. The next thing for this refrigerator is this thing here is called a thermistor. You can see the sticker on the wall says if you move it higher, it gets colder. You're going to move it up as high as the cord will, that little cord will allow, or cable will allow you to move it up. And that gets this... You're going to do that just about all the time. Maybe sometimes when it's a little bit uh, um, chilly outside, you might have to back it off. But generally speaking, you're going to have it up all the way. This is your carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. It should always be green like that. If it goes off, 
you want to go outside, shut off your tanks and figure out what's going on, okay? Very important. This is the thermostat for your furnace. Just turn it on that way. Turn it off. As soon as you turn it off, the flame will go out, but it'll still purge itself. It'll run on for another minute or so. That's normal. Okay, your bathroom. This GFCI here, all the plugs in the trailer are wired through this one, even the one on the outside. So if you're using a coffee pot outside uh, and it pops, you reset it here. Sink and shower work like any other sink and shower. Your toilet. Let me get a position where I can show you here. This is how you flush it here. That's residual water in it. So um, basically, uh, you can't run this without chemical or without water in it to start off with. So when you get to the campground, you hook yourself up, you put up, hook up the water and the power. You come in here, you put the chemical you use in here, whichever chemical you use, then you'll step on the pedal. The black tank is directly below, and you'll let about a gallon or so of water run in there with the chemical and then you're ready to use it till it's full. If you were to stay at the same campsite after you've dumped it, let's say you've, you're staying another week and you, you dumped the black tank, uh, you would come back in, re, in here and repeat that procedure. Uh, there, you can't run it without chemical or water, so you put the chemical in, a gallon or so of water, and you're all set till the tank's full and dumped again, okay? You can also add more water to this just by pushing this down a little way, it'll activate the valve but not the trap and the toilet, so you can fill this up as high as you want before you use it. Okay? Alrighty. I think we've got it. Okay, yep. So, I guess that covers it. I'm looking around here. You also have a vent in your bathroom. Uh, you want to use that with the shower, just so you can pull the humidity out, because these things are built very tightly. This is your TV antenna. It doesn't go up and down. You just rotate it to tune it in. Okay? All right. So I think that's it. I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer from National RV of Detroit. And um, if you have any questions, you call us. Um, take full advantage of online videos. And uh, thank you very much.